This is Joseph Pipitone with Scalability Experts, and this video is going to cover how to create a raw device mapping with VMware vSphere 5. Let's go over a few reasons for using raw device mappings. If your RDM will be used as a dedicated backup drive only, an RDM can prove to be beneficial. You can use an RDM when you think a virtual disk would become too large or greater than the VMware 2 terabyte limit. You can also utilize native SAN tools, such as snapshots or replication, depending on your hardware vendor. If you're looking to cluster using Microsoft clustering services, they do require the use of RDMs to provide high availability and to pass cluster validation tests. RDMs can provide you with efficient disaster recovery options, such as quickly connecting the RDM to another physical host if the host is connected to your storage area network. You can also attach the RDM to another virtual machine as well. During a vMotion, a virtual machine is registered to the destination host. Any RDMs remain as RDMs when the VM is registered to that new host. An RDM will not be included in a snapshot if physical compatibility mode is used. A single VMDK is limited to 2 terabytes. An RDM in physical compatibility mode can be up to 64 terabytes in size. Here we have only 2.31 gigs of uh, free space, which could pose a potential problem when attempting to create a snapshot, depending on how much data is on the volume. And when I say snapshot, I'm referring to a VMware snapshot. Veeam will try to create a snapshot, and this will result in the virtual machine actually pausing, and the backup jobs are going to fail. Here's the actual uh, VMDK which what I've done was I've cut a even though it's labeled 2 terabytes it's actually about 1.4 terabytes and there's the VMDK that's about 1.4 terabytes uh, I don't really see the point in creating a 1.3 terabyte VMDK to fill up the entire uh, data store and this is primarily used for backups and nothing else Here's our Veeam backup server. I'm just going to edit the settings and take a look to see what we have here. Hard disk 1 is on the one of the 4 terabyte shared data stores on the P2000 fiber channel SAN. And here is our backup data store on the 2 terabyte volume. And here's our VMDK. Going back to the virtual machine, uh, we're going to edit this job, which backs up the entire data center. Here's the cluster. And as you can see, I've uh, disabled the job, the, the schedule from running, which by default runs at 9 p.m. And if I didn't disable this, it would uh, actually be running right now, so it's a good thing that we did. Let's take a look at how this switch is zoned. The, the purpose of zoning a fiber channel switch is to partition your fabric uh, into smaller subsets or groups, uh, primarily for increasing security and simplifying management. All of the VMware ESXi5 hosts are all given access to the two fiber channel controllers on the fiber channel SAN good thing about going this route is let's say that for instance you have another host on your network that you plug into your fiber channel switch well if they're not currently zoned and if they don't belong to a zone set then that host will not have access to the fiber channel SAN in this case so from a security standpoint uh, you could really strengthen your network and prevent certain hosts from talking to other devices that you don't want them talking to uh, each system connected to the SAN should only be allowed to access those ports in which we specified here. Just to give you an idea, it is uh, just one big RAID 50, uh, which was the most efficient way to get the most space out of this uh, uh, based on the number of drives that we have. And here's our 2 terabyte, or 1.4 terabyte actually, uh, data store that we're currently using 
for these Veeam backups. And this is what we will be mapping, uh, uh, using as the raw device mapping. Uh, the VMDK currently lives on this hard disk too. And here I'm going to remove the data store completely and delete the files from the disk since we're no longer needing them. Storage I.O. control is enabled on the data store. So what we have to do first before we can delete it is disable storage I.O. control. So I want to get properties on this data store and then untick this box to disable storage I.O. control. And then we should be able to delete the data store. I'm just going to verify on each host that storage I.O. control is disabled. Now I should be able to delete the data store. Here you can see raw device mappings is unavailable. We want to rescan the fiber controller, which will then allow us to add the LUN as a raw device mapping. So now that we've done our rescan of our fiber controller, I'll go ahead and add a new hard disk. And now you can see this raw device mappings option is able to be chosen, which will allow us to take full advantage of all of the space of that LUN, which is 1.27 terabytes. And we're going to store this with the virtual machine. And the benefit to this is that you will be able to perform a, a virtual machine migration or vMotion, and you will still be able to retain that RDM on that machine and it will not matter which host this VM lives on. Now the physical compatibility will allow the guest OS to access the hardware directly and if you take a snapshot of the VM it will not include this disk. Which in, in my case uh, if I wanted to back up this Veeam machine, if I wanted it to back up itself, uh, when it does take a snapshot of the virtual machine it will not take a snapshot of the RDM. The other benefit to this is that the virtual machine should not pause itself which would result in the entire backup job just failing. So the next step here is to select a virtual device node. You, you'll want to select a, a SCSI ID that is not currently being used and you don't normally have to change that option. But as you can see, we were able to add the LUN as a raw mapped device. And now we should be able to power on the virtual machine. And then once this machine boots up, we should be able to uh, bring the disk online, initialize it, and create our primary partition, which will be used for Veeam backups. Here in disk management, we should see, here we go, so this is currently offline, let's bring it online. This is our RDM to that uh, 1.4 terabyte, about 1.4 terabytes. Let's create a new volume. Now I'm going to have to go back and verify that the drive letter was in fact B. I believe it was V, but we'll double check that.
Here's our backup repository. As you can see, it says failed. So what I want to do is I want to take a look at the backups that we currently have that the VM thinks we have on disk and won't allow me to remove them from the backups here because the physical backup files do not exist anymore. What I want to do is remove this from backups, which will remove any records of this of these backups in our Veeam database. And this was an old test backup job. We can remove that as well. And now we are essentially starting over fresh. Here's our backup repository here. And as you can see, the drive letter is supposed to be V. So I'm going to need to go and change that drive letter from B over to V. And now I'm just going to rescan. And now that we have our backup drive freshly mapped as an RDM, I'll go ahead and re-enable the schedule. Here as you can see our, our backup repository is being recognized. Nothing else in the backup job changed. So I'll set this to run automatically. And I'm going to manually start this backup job now because it's not set to run until tomorrow night, the 15th. So once I hit start, it will start a full backup. What we essentially did here was we removed our VMDK from our shared data store. And this Veeam server is the only server that's ever going to have access to this backup drive repository. And I'm just going to go ahead and clean this up a bit since we don't need to keep this in an organized folder. And now if we wanted to, we could allow any other physical machine or any other virtual machine for that matter access to this RDM. So after we've created the raw device mapping, what I wanted to do was perform a vMotion uh, virtual machine migration from one host to another just to confirm that the RDM does indeed stay attached to the virtual machine. So here I will just take a look at the settings just to confirm that the RDM is a mapped raw LUN. So I'm going to leave this machine powered on. I'm simply just going to move it from one host to another. Now currently right now this virtual machine lives on dot twenty. Let's move it over to dot thirty. And the only thing we want to do is change the host. I don't want to change the data store or change the virtual machine storage to another data store. Veeam Backups is still alive and well. So what I've been able to determine from this experiment here is that when I move this one virtual machine from one host to another using our vMotion migration, the RDM remained as an RDM when the virtual machine was registered to the other host. So no changes to the virtual machine itself are made as far as where this data store lives uh, since it does reside on the fiber SAN and it is a raw map device. Once again, thank you for watching. For more information, please visit our website at scalabilityexperts.com.